Maria Sykes. The pitcher today for the Wolfpack, we said it earlier, Riley Wyman, 0-6 on the season coming in today. And for Virginia Tech, Mr. Tyler Katz, he's got you covered. Well, Nick, not a lot changing for Virginia Tech. Number 90, Emma Ritter leads things off in left. Batting second, the second baseman, number 97, Cameron Fagan. Batting third, the first baseman, number two, Jamie Bailey. Fielder, number 88, and the player of the game yesterday, Bree Peck. Batting fifth, the designated player, number 14, Emma Jackson. Batting sixth, the right fielder, number six, Addie Green. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number eight, Kelsey Bennett. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number seven, Tegan Thrunk, the only member of the starting lineup for Virginia Tech. As of right now, batting 400 or better. And Woo. rounding out the batting order, the catcher, number 44, Rachel Castine. When, and in the circle will be number 18, in Lindsey Grine, making her Tech Softball Park debut today, Nick. Yeah, the freshman will get the ball today. And she's warming up right now. The freshman from Mokenna, Illinois, went to Lincoln Way Central. We'll talk about her all throughout today's game. Like we said before we went to break, Virginia Tech donning their charcoal jerseys with Hokies in white across the chest and the white numbers uh, on the left hip and on the back as well. Orange belts and orange matching visors for the ones that choose to wear them. And then of course, NC State donning their white jerseys with white helmets, red numbers, red NC State across the chest, and red pants with Wolfpack along the side of the pants. Let's have some fun today, folks. We're dry today and a little bit warmer. The breeze pushing out uh, into outfield today, so we might see some long balls today and a couple hits that may have gone out of the park yesterday may actually leave the park today. Well, you talk about this leadoff batter and Rebecca Murray was the only member of the Wolfpack yesterday with a base hit and she got two of them. And a grad transfer from Elon has been a big pickup for this NC State program. Here's the first offering and it's right in there for the delayed strike call. Today's umpire, Donald Parnell II, he's calling the strikes and balls behind home plate today. At first base, Jim Cooper, and at third base, Robert Guest. The early 0-1 count, here's the pitch, and this ball is swung on, lifted into deep center field. Emma Ritter goes back just in front of the warning track and an easily catch and grab, and that's one away. A good start for the Hokies, especially after Rebecca Murray had that game yesterday in which she went two for three against the Hokies ace, Emma Lemley. Good to see the Hokies get that out early on in this game to start off on the right foot. Caitlin Pavlik is in the two hole today. And here's the first pitch of the at bat. It's a little high and inside and it's a 1-0 count. Pavlik is another one of those transfers for NC State, switching over as a graduate from the Pitt Panthers. Started in 28 games in left field for the Panthers last season. Now the Wolfpack get to use her and left where she starts today. 116 total starts in her career in the blue and yellow. The second pitch is gonna graze the outside corner and it's a 1-1 count. Now the one thing for Pavlik is she has struggled recently. In the Wolfpack last series prior to coming to Blacksburg against James Madison, went 0 for 6 combined and 0 for 2 yesterday, looking to break that cold spell. The 1-1 one, one turns into the 2-1 with some groans from the crowd. Pavlik, since going three for three with two doubles and a home run and a walk versus Elon. That was five games ago, by the way. She has gone three of 19. The 2-1. Snaps the mitt and it's gonna be a 3-1 count. Early groaning from the maroon and orange faithful that have made their way out to TSP. Once again, cannot get over this crowd. Yesterday was very sparse due to the rain and cold weather, but today it is packed. The 3-1. Swung on and foul tipped into the netting. Becomes a 3-2, and we've got a full count, the first full count of the day. Last season, Pavlik played against the Hokies as a member of the Pitt Panthers. She went two for three against the Hokies, including a two-run home run and a double. So has a successful career against Virginia Tech, just in different colors. The payoff pitch is in the dirt, and Pavlik will take a board 
on first base. The second batter of the game for the Wolfpack reaches first. That'll be her ninth walk drawn of the season. Excuse me, tenth walk. She had one yesterday against Emma Lemley. That was Emma's only slip up besides the two hits by Bruma Murray yesterday. In the three hole today for the Wolfpack, Hannah Goodwin. She has Pavlik on first base. Here's Grind's first offering, and it snaps the net, and it's a strike one. And we keep talking about transfers. We had Rebecca Murray and Elon transfer, Caitlin Pavlik, the Pitt transfer, Hannah Goodwin, another ACC transfer coming from the Clemson Tigers. Hannah Goodwin was an absolute stud in her freshman season. There's the 0-1 pitch, it's outside and away, so it becomes a 1-1. Yeah, Hannah Goodwin started 26 games as a freshman at Clemson. She's a sophomore now, right now, but she, that's because she missed all of last, or two years ago, she missed all of last year, two years ago, due to pre, uh, surgery. That year she was preseason all ACC in her true sophomore season. She was second in ACC in batting average at 385. Here's the 1-1, one -one. it's popped flying high into the air. It's going to be right at the first baseline and it will drop for a foul ball. Jamie Bailey just couldn't hunt that one down in time, so it's a 1-2 count. And unfortunate for Tech, this is the second time this series Jamie Bailey has dropped a, what looked to be a routine fly ball in foul territory. He had one yesterday closer to the right field fence. And a good one, batted 385 her freshman year. That was second best in the conference. This year she's batting 298. She went 0 for 3 yesterday against Emma Lemley. Here's the one, two. It swung on and lifted right behind us and up and over the wall. And it will land right outside the indoor practice facility. So she will battle and stay in the at bat at the one, two. Runner on first base here on the top of the first. 0-0 zero, zero is still our score. One outs for the Hokie defense. Here's the one, two, and it's upstairs, and they're gonna say strike three. The first punch out of the day for Grind. And retiring Goodwin early for the second out of the top of the first. A big strike out there, and especially when you're able to locate the zone, Lindsey Grind is learning that zone of the home plate umpire, Donald Purnell. The first pitch of the at-bat to Michaela Marbury is right down Broadway, and it's an 0-1. Once again, Caitlin Pavlik rests on the first base pillow after drawing a walk. This is the fourth batter face for Grind today, and here's the 0-1. It's way outside, and it is snagged by Castine for a 1-1. Marbury in her true freshman season the Maryland native was a 2019 Washington Post All-Metro first team, so really garnering a lot of attention. This ball is smacked right to Kelsey Bennett. She will send it over to Jamie Bailey for the third out of the top of the first, and that is how we do things here at TSP. Through the top of the first, runner left on base for the pack. We'll see you on the other side of this break as the Hokies have Ritter, Fagan, and Bailey do up. You're listening to Virginia Tech Softball here from Le Learfield. Welcome back to Tech Softball Park here in Blacksburg, Virginia. A cool, almost eclipsing 50 degrees on the day with a nice wind breeze from coming from our backs and going out to the outfield. With the ball in her hand today for the Wolfpack, Riley Wyman, the freshman from Gardnerville, Nevada. She'll get the ball today for the first time in the ACC. She has six or seven previous appearances. And in her most recent, it was on Sunday against JMU where she gave up 12 hits and 10 runs. Well, it was a complete game loss in relief. She had to pitch the second through the eighth inning in a game that went into extras, allowed 12 hits, 10 runs. But here's the thing for Wyman, only four of those were earned against her. A lot of errors for this Wolfpack team. They had three on the defensive side yesterday. Leading things off for the Hokies, Emma Ritter, and here's her first offering. It's a strike one right down Broadway. Kind of a little off-speed pitch there, a little slow right there. Another thing about Riley Wyman, true freshman, was the number 23 ranked utility player by extra inning softball. She's only been in the circle so far this season for the Wolfpack. 
The 0-1 is hit and grounded to third, and Ritter is out at first. An easy pitch and catch right there to first base. And Ritter will be out for the first away today. That was a great charge by Goodwin over at third. Just knew exactly where the ball was going to be. Came in, confidence in her throw to fire it over to Insco for the out. Number 97. 97, Cameron Fagan up to bat in the two hole today. Family tradition, her walk ups music. Never more appropriate for anybody in Virginia Tech athletics history. Wyman's first offering is smacked and grounded up first base, and it's a base hit in the center field. Fagan's aboard for her first hit of this, C this ACC series. Had a bit of a down series in Texas, was able to come back to Tech Softball Park where she's comfortable, went one for three yesterday, and now able to get a one for one start, get a runner on with one out. That's got to ins inspire some confidence through the rest of the lineup card. Jamie Bailey, who's batting 404 this season, takes the first offering and it's a strike one. She'll have Fagan at first with one out. Ritter was gunned down at first. And that's how we sit. 0-0 zero, zero is our score. One hit for the Hokies, and that just came just a few seconds ago. I'm Nick Brown to my right, Tyler Katz. The 0-1 for Jamie Bailey is upstairs and inside. It's a 1-1. One, one. Jamie Bailey, the fifth year senior. She's been a staple for this Virginia Tech softball program over the previous four seasons. Two, three run home runs this year alone. She also has one two-run home run. As the 1-1 one, one becomes a 2-1 as that pitch is high and out of the box. Well, you'll take a look at just Jamie Bailey's statistics. Was the team leader in doubles last season with 12. In her tech career has hit 44 doubles. Just knows how to extend that initial first base to head over to second. Is so good at just extending that base. That's a dirty ball right there, and it's a 3-1 count for Bailey. Fagan's ready to go at first, one out for Virginia Tech's offense. The right-hand batter, Jamie Bailey, staring down the right-hand pitcher, Wyman. Wyman fires it inside, and Bailey will trot aboard for the 4-1 walk. Riley Wyman, a pitcher who has had a lot of control so far, only her 16th walk of the season compared to 18 strikeouts. Doesn't allow too many walks on average, but for Virginia Tech, the more important thing is getting Cameron Fagan up to second base and a runner in scoring position with just one out. Virginia Tech was able to load the bases in the first inning last, yesterday in NC State as Bree Peck takes a big chop at this one and fouls it out wide out of TSP. 0-1 count for Bree Peck after the first offering. Like I said, Virginia Tech was able to load the bags with no outs against NC State in the first inning yesterday, and they were able to score four runs as they got the single carousel going around in that first inning. The 0-1 has swung on, and Bree Peck missed everything, everything that time, and it's an 0-2. Peck with the triple. That turned into an inside-the-park home run after a throwing error. She had a productive game yesterday, one for two and a walk. She scored two runs as well. Player of the game yesterday for Virginia Tech. She stares down an 0-2 hole. This is swung on, did she go? And they say, yes, she did. And that's a three-pitch strikeout for Wyman, and that's two away for the Hokies offense. Just able to fool Peck enough to get that bat around and cross the plane of home plate. And for Ryan, excuse me, Wyman, only her 19th strikeout of the year. But if she can get some confidence early against a nationally ranked team, it could do wonders for her through the remainder of this game. Emma Jackson, the animal science major, steps into the batting box with two outs and two runners on. She pops this one high into center field. No distance, and this should be a comfortable out for the Wolfpack, and it is. Virginia Tech left two on the base, two stranded for the Hokies offense through one, still 0-0. Virginia Tech was able to muster a hit and a walk against Wyman, but still through one full frame, the score is tied and scoreless at zero. You're listening to Virginia Tech softball here from Learfield. 
Welcome back to Tech Softball Ballpark here in the beautiful Blacksburg, Virginia as March is just getting started. We had crazy weather here in the mountains already yesterday. It was about 38 degrees, raining sideways for the majority of the day. And then after the game ended, it was really coming down. A torrential downpour, Nick. I know I was driving home and I, I got out of my car when I got back home and the street was just a river of water <laughs> running down to the storm drain. Well. Today we wake up, blue skies, literally, I can't spot a cloud in the sky today. And it's about 45 to 50 degrees with a pretty, it's a decent sized breeze right now. But thunder and lightning last night, and all of a sudden, blue skies today. But we are happy to be here at Tech Softball Park, zero to zero after the first frame. And NC State is up to bat. Amanda Hasler, the catcher. She was swing happy yesterday, stays home on that one, and it's a 1-0 count after the first offering. Struck out two times yesterday, three times, excuse me, and all of them were swinging. Just a little bit swing happy if you take a look at her stats. Not a great stat to read for her, but her strikeout rate is higher than her batting average right now. That ball is inside again, and it's a 2-0 count. Hasler staying disciplined right there. And 34 at bats, Hasler has 10 base hits, 12 strikeouts. So just needs to find a little bit more plate discipline for Hasler and able to make contact with that ball. The Avon Connecticut, the Avon Connecticut native stays home again on that one, but that one's in there for a strike. And Amanda Hasler's a player who in their last series against JMU went three for five, made a lot of contact on the ball. Emma Lemley was the pitcher yesterday. Obviously <laughs> not easy to hit against her, but we'll see how she does against Grind today. The 2-1, and Hasler has not swung this at bat. It's a 3-1. Must have gotten some good coaching there. Now all three of these balls have been really close to her ankles and inside. Right hand batter from Connecticut. Ranked number 10 in her class of 2023. The freshman takes the 3-1, and that's strike two, so we have a full count, the second full count for either teams today. And has watched a full count go by, has not swung the bat and just watched that scoreboard tick up. One, two, three ball, one, two strikes, and able to get we'll it down to three, two. We'll see swing. The payoff pitch by Grind is swung on, and this is snag at by the shortstop, and out at first is Bailey. A marvelous play by Tegan Thrunk, the freshman, to lay out every last inch in her body to grab that one. She's a reason, there's a reason she's starting in this starting nine for the number 10 Virginia Tech Hokies in her true freshman season, and that's why she can make, make diving plays, full extension of the body to make the play, and on top of that, after extending her body and diving out, made a beautiful throw onto Jamie Bailey over at first. Threw it from her knees as well. Ensley with one out, pops this one high in the air. Can Bailey get to it? I don't think so. It's gonna ding off the top of the dugout of NC State and reaching over the fence as a fan and he's gonna get some free pizza. We mentioned it yesterday, but that new promotion here at Tech Softball Park, return a foul of softball and get a free slice of pizza. So good promotion, I'd take it. <laughs> Last year it was a hot dog, this year it's pizza. Getting real fancy here at TSP now. Ensley for the Wolfpack battled hard against Emma Lemley, but still went 0 for 2. Grind's second offering is upstairs and away. It's a 1-1 count. Taylor Ensley hit five home runs, Nick, in five days. Now, part of that is because she hit, had a two home run game against Penn, where she had four RBIs against the Quakers, has since slowed down a little bit, but was on a tear earlier. A big swing and miss right there for Ensley. It's a one-two count. Ensley from Franklin, North Carolina. She had a six game hit streak last year. No hit streak this year. Grinds one, two. Is right over the plate, but they say it's just a little too high. It's a two, two count. A few groans right there from behind home plate. Last year with Ensley, 
18 of 69 for a 261 batting average. And that ball is downstairs for a full count. This year, Ensley's batting 275, so not much has changed. She's kind of dropped, uh, she's, she's risen up a little bit in her batting average, but not a lot. The full payoff pitch is gunned out to deep center field. Going back to the wall is Ritter, and she snags it at the wall. Bree Peck, excuse me, went all the way back to the center field wall and snagged that with her left hand. It's two away for Virginia Tech, and both of the outs have been exciting, raising TSP fans to their seats. And we saw Bree Peck make a great play to end the game yesterday, snagging that glove in the web gem again out in center. Madison Insko will be up to bat now as that pitch is way high, and it's a 1-0 count. The pitcher yesterday for the Wolfpack, she has been the bright spot for this offense and early defense for this whole team. The freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, has been phenomenal this year. A 1-1 count as that one just nipped the inside corner. Well, the Virginia native as well, the native of Chesapeake, was a three-time first-team All-State in Virginia. This ball is swung on and popped fly into Cameron Fagan's territory, and she snags it easily with her webbed glove. Three up, three down, all of them snagged or thrown out at first. Easy work for the defense for Virginia Tech, and we will see you on the other side of this second inning. At the bottom of the second, two up for the Hokies, Green, Bennett, and Thrunk. You're listening to Virginia Tech Softball here from Learfield. Welcome back to Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg, Virginia. I'm Nick Brown to my right. Tyler Katz, Virginia Tech and NC State in game two of this first ACC series and Virginia Tech's home opening series at Tech Softball Park for the 2023 campaign. Remains scoreless through two full frames, or oh, through one and a half frames, excuse me. Zero to zero, Virginia Tech with the only hit of the game coming from Cameron Fagan in the two hole in the bottom of the first. She was left aboard and stranded after that first inning. So, yep, nothing really going on for the offenses today. Like you said, about 50 degrees with the wind blowing out to center field. It is a beautiful day in Blacksburg, and the crowd is packed to the brim here at TSP. A lot of maroon and orange and a lot of red and white, too. There's a lot of Virginia natives on this NC State roster. Addie Green up to bat for the first time today. And she will take a ooh, brief swing there. She wanted to pull it back, but she couldn't in time. The right fielder batting 318 on the season. Yesterday, she went one for three in an RBI single. And currently riding a three-game hitting streak with that one for three performance yesterday. Team leader in home runs on the year. She's got four of those things, and this is hit right to the pitcher, and she is thrown out at first. Nice play by Wyman as that ball was hit into the ground or right to Wyman, and Wyman literally did not move. <laughs> yeah, just was an easy comebacker for Wyman and was a simple catch and toss with Madison Insko over at first base. For that's a routine back and forth throwing pair between Insko and Wyman, who Insko also doubles as a pitcher for the Wolfpack as well as a first baseman. First offering to Kelsey Bennett for the day is upstairs in a ball. Well, Nick, I know you mentioned Cameron Fagan having some family tradition of playing athletics and being athletes. Well, Kelsey Bennett, brother Connor, played in the Cincinnati Reds organization for baseball. Yeah, a few years there with the Reds, as this is swung on by Bennett, but she missed it all, 1-1. One, one. Kelsey Bennett yesterday, one for two with two RBIs. Batting 270 on the season. The 1-1 one, one turns into a 1-2 as she foul tips this one off the edge of her bat. And Wyman has Kelsey Bennett right where she wants her. Wyman the freshman pitcher today for the Wolfpack. Only allowing one hit. She did allow a walk, however, to Jamie Bailey earlier. The first, and this is blooped in the center field. Will it get down? No, it will not. Great charging play right there by the left fielder, Caitlin Pavlik, to get Kelsey Bennett out for her first at bat. So two away for Virginia Tech here in the bottom of the second. 
I'll say I've been very impressed with NC State so far today. You're bringing in a pitcher who has an 0-6 record, a 7.78 ERA, and you're taking on the number 13 team by ESPN's rankings, number 10 by USA Today, and have only allowed one hit and only a runner to get the second. So far, so good for the pack. Tegan Thrunk, the former 58th ranked recruit last year, takes the first offering upstairs for a ball. She's had a marvelous start to her young campaign. In the top of the second, she made a sparkling play at shortstop. She dove for the ball and tossed out the batter at first. Foul tips that one for a 1-1 count. The shortstop residing from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Her dad, Robert, this is gonna be fitting. He played at played some basketball at St. Peter's, and that's the same school, the Peacocks, that went all the way to the Elite Eight last year, and one of the most incredible Cinderella runs you've ever seen in March Madness. This ball is hit and lifted into short, shallow center field, and that's a routine pop fly out. Three up, three down for Virginia Tech's defense. All of them out at first or caught in the air. Through two frames, zero to zero, Virginia Tech with the lone hit and lone walk against either team today. Virginia Tech and NC State theme battle here at game two at TSP, do up for the pack. Goins, Sykes, and Murray on the other side of this break. You're listening to Virginia Tech softball here from Learfield. We welcome you back here to Tech Softball Park. Tyler Katz joined alongside Nick Brown. will be taking you the way through the third, fourth, and fifth frames here from Tech Softball Park. NC State getting set to go here in the third inning with Ellie Goins, Nadia Sykes, and Rebecca Murray do up taking on Lindsey Grine. Ellie Goins will lead things off for the pack here in the third inning. Had an 0 for 2 performance with two strikeouts in yesterday's ball game. The true freshman from Mooresville, North Carolina steps in. Well, Mooresville High School, which is where Ellie Goins is from, their nickname, the Blue Devils. Now another Blue Devils taking on the Hokies coming up very shortly. The first pitch is a called strike from Lindsey Grind. We're still awaiting tip off between Virginia Tech and Duke down in Greensboro for the ACC semifinal winner of the Blue Devils and the Hokies take on the Louisville Cardinals for the ACC championship tomorrow. They annihilated Notre Dame today. Ball too far upstairs. Count's gonna go even 1-1. And Notre Dame dealing with a big loss. Two big losses on the season. And it, it really is what ended up sinking Notre Dame in this tournament. Haley Van Lith and the Cardinals able to ride to the championship against either the Blue Devils or the Hokies. Foul ball goes behind us. Count will go into the Hokies' favor. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, and that, that just hit the, the glass right there behind us off the bounce. No shattered windows yet here in the indoor practice facility. Not yet, and I think those, <laughs> I think those windows are built to last, so I, I would hope there's not. Probably three inches thick. One, two, inside that hits her, and Ellie Gones will take the free pass to first base on a hit by pitch. It'll bring up a player we haven't seen yet in this series. Nadia Sykes, the freshman from Rollsville or High School, calls Raleigh, North Carolina, her hometown. Last appeared in game two of the JMU series for NC State, where she went one for two with an RBI and a strikeout. First pitch to Sykes is, will miss upstairs for Grind. A ball and no strikes. Grind has surrendered a walk and a hit by a pitch so far today. That hit by a pitch leading Ellie Goins to stand at first base. Top three, no score here from Tech Softball Park. Second pitch of the at bat. That one finds the zone. Get the strike call from Donald Purnell, the second, our home plate umpire, calling the balls and strikes. And wind's starting to pick up a little bit more here from TSP as well. I'd say so. My notes are going everywhere right now. 1-1. One, one. Hammered towards left field. Deep back goes Ritter off the top of the wall. Heading over to third will go Ellie Goins. And at first base is Nadia Sykes, who will yell in celebration back to the dugout. A big opportunity for NC State here in the top of the third. 
That's only her second hit of the season. Prior to that at bat, she was one for four. She did have three runs with pinch running or reaching on two walks and a hit by pitch, but man, only her second collegiate hit, and that was two inches away from being a home run. That's the second time this series second already time. we've seen it. Hit had the top a ball of the hit the top of the wall, and the park kept it in. And the wind is blowing out to left field, too, for what that's worth. Rebecca Murray, big swing and miss, was excited at the thought of. NC State getting their first run of the series. By the way, Ellie Goins now standing at third, the first time this series that the Wolfpack have gotten a runner to third base. Rebecca Murray, the native to Indian Trail, North Carolina, first team all CAA last season with the Elon Phoenix. 0-1, lifted towards left. Ritter goes back at the track, kiss it goodbye. And NC State has a three to nothing lead off the bat of a Rebecca Murray home run. It's her third of the season, and she'll be mobbed at home plate. Things just got interesting in TSP, folks. A seven nothing shutout for the Hokies yesterday, and all of a sudden the Wolfpack are feeling it here at TSP in the top of the third. A big home run, the first run scored for NC State. They pride themselves as a team on their ability to hit home runs. That will be their 21st as a team this season and their 17th game played. Well, next batter, Caitlin Pavlik. The grad transfer from Pitt. 0 for 0 today after drawing a walk in her first at bat. Grind, trying to have a short memory and will put a pitch too far upstairs for ball one. Yeah, we'll have to see how the freshman responds. This is a in front of her home faithful, she definitely still has encouragement from the maroon and orange, but that was a big swing to put for NC State up three. Second pitch of the at-bat, finding the zone for strike one. Evens the count at 1-1. One, one. By the way, still no outs Ooh. here in the top of the third. Three-nothing, Wolfpack now leading the number 13 and number 10, depending on which poll you look at, Virginia Tech Hokies. Big swing and a miss by Pavlik. That wind shifting as well Woo! was going out to left a moment ago, now going out towards right center and shifting back towards left. So it's just kind of oscillating between left and right <laughs> field. One, two, foul back. Let me just tell you, it doesn't matter where the wind's going, it's blowing and blowing hard today. And it's just a, a swirling chaos. Ball and two strikes with Blacksburg being in the New River Valley, keeping a lot of those winds in and circulates. Winds are typically heavy. Fly ball towards right green there to make the catch right in front of the scoreboard. First out of the inning as Pavlik is retired on the fly out to right. It's still fly out though into deep right. And that's, uh, you know, that's three to, in this inning alone that have gotten almost to the warning track. Two of them did get to the wall. One hit the top of the wall and bounced back in. But that one getting close to the warning track. So Brian getting, letting balls get hit by bats here in the top of the third. And a good one, the next batter will take the first pitch for a ball. By the way, for those curious about the wind conditions, <laughs> 12 miles per hour sustained out of the southeast with winds gusting up to 24 miles per hour. Oh, I feel it. You go through a school <laughs> zone and that's a speeding <laughs> ticket for the wind. That's funny. So it's a 1-0 <laughs> count for Hannah Goodwin. Pitch from Grind missing upstairs yet again. It's a 2-0. By the way, across the way over at English Field, the 49ers and the Hokies in baseball taking each other on in game two of the series. Went to extras where Chris Canazero hit a walk-off home run. It's tied at zeros in the bottom of the second at English Field. Another ball misses, and Goodwin will go ahead in the count 3-0. Should she reach, or following Goodwin, Michaela Marbury, Amanda Hasler's in the hole, should one of them reach? 3-0. All the strike took a step out of the batter's box and was called back. There is uh, action over on the arm farm for the Hokies. Emily warming up over there. 
3-1, check swing, call the strike regardless. Full count now as Grine has battled back in the count from down 3-0. Now needing to rally, by the way, in the bottom halves of the innings. Down three to nothing, foul oh, ball heading back into the crowd and nearly hits a spectator. I thought that one was going over our heads for a second, but the uh, the, the wind kept, kept it, it in. The wind kept it in. Just shows you how impactful that could be. I thought for sure that one had the trajectory to head out of the park. That is a free slice of pizza for that lucky spectator. Payoff pitch, grounder foul just dribbles up the third baseline and will come to a rest in front of the Hokie dugout. And a good win, the former Clemson star freshman. Trying to get it going against the Hokies this inning. 0 for 1 today, 0 for 2 yesterday. Payoff once more from Grind, swing and a miss. We'll get her second strike out of the day and her second against Hannah Goodwin. So two punch outs for Grind, two outs in the inning. After a three run home run earlier this inning by Rebecca Murray. Michaela Marbury will be the next to grab a bat for the pack. True freshman will ground one foul. Went 0 for 3 yesterday with a strikeout. She's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to third back in the first. Looks like we're just about with the last game going a bit longer. Looks like we're a bit of a ways away from that game being tipped off in Greensboro. 0 1 downstairs. Will miss. Count goes even to Marbury, 1 1. Again, should she reach Amanda Hasler, the catcher for the pack, stands on deck. Marbury, two home, three home runs this season. Ball will miss outside, 2 1 count. Hit home runs against Elon and Arizona, nationally ranked Arizona at that, so knows how to play against some of the upper echelon teams in NCAA softball. At Arizona, too. 2-1, grounded and hooks foul up the third baseline. Grind has the chance here to kill the inning. Get out of it, only down three. Hokies scored four runs in the first inning yesterday, and then a combination of three runs after that in the second through the sixth. Did not have to bat in the seventh. 2-2, two -two, grounded to third. Bennett picks it up, fires across the diamond to Bailey in time for the out. So a three-run home run highlights the inning from Rebecca Murray. Middle of the third, pack lead three to nothing. We'll be back. You're listening to Hokie Softball from Learfield. Well, one of Virginia Tech's smallest fans leading the Let's Go Hokies charge, Arthur, one of the Virginia Tech softball super fans sitting in the front row leading the charge of the chance here as we're about to head into the bottom of the third here at TSP. Yeah, rough top of the first, or top of the third for the Hokies defense, uh, and Lindsey Grind giving up two long balls and a walk, or a hit by pitch. And that's how we sit at 3-0, but Virginia Tech's gauntlet of batters just got even bigger right now. We have a pinch hitter, Morgan Overright is pinch hitting for Rachel Castine. Overright is batting 261 on the season. Called strike on the outside part of the plate for Riley Wyman. Just a brief reminder of the rules here. You can have a pinch hitter come in for a player, but only once during the ball game. So Castine cannot be pinch ran for or pinch hit for after this overitis at bat. Ball downstairs will even the count. Morgan Overitis in her first at bat at TSP this season. Last year, 2022, all ACC second team. Overitis, a big pickup for head coach Pete Demore, the transfer from the Michigan Wolverines. Will hit a fly ball to center. Murray comes after it, will reach up, and it's a routine fly ball out. Overitis flies out to Rebecca Murray. Flipping back to the top of the batting order, it's Emma Ritter, the left fielder, number 90. She grounded out to third to start off the Hokies' ball game. 
offensively back in the first inning. Update from English Field, by the way. The Hokies now lead one to nothing after Grady reached on a throwing air. Garrick Evil came in to score. So it's one to nothing Hokies at English Field. Ball misses for Ritter, 1-0. There's a lot of fans here at DSP. Again, we don't know how many fans are over there, but uh, it's a beautiful day. And of course, Virginia Tech men's basketball in action today at four o'clock. So I'm sure a lot of these fans will head on over to Castle Coliseum later today. Another ball downstairs for Ritter. A good opportunity. This game is going to end. If you typically take the time frame of a softball game of around two hours, it will end right around tip off yeah. over at Castle Coliseum. So as long as you're not in the uh, general admission student section, you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> 3-0, Ritter has watched three balls go by. And now Wyman's going to get some moral support from Nadia Sykes, the second baseman. And this is the pitcher that the Hokies want to see when batting today. This is definitely the pitcher that they can shell later today. Wyman 0-6 coming into today. She's done really, really well against the Hokies today. 3-0 will miss inside, and the second walk surrendered by Riley Wyman so far. And you're right, Nick, Wyman has done an excellent job so far today, settling down and trying to shake that 0-6 record to start her collegiate career. What a first win it would be if she could do it against Virginia Tech. She's only allowed one hit and two walks today. Nobody, or excuse me, Virginia Tech's only had one in scoring position today. And that was back in the first. Cameron Fagan was the girl in scoring position. She now takes the at bat, swinging away. First pitch is fouled off, off the net and into the glove. So it's an 0 1 for Fagan. She's 1 for 1 today, the lone hokey with a base hit. 3 to nothing. Wolfpack lead in the bottom of the third. Hits columns in favor of the Wolfpack as well, 2-1. Two, to one. two other Hokies have reached. Ritter stands at first after drawing a walk. Jamie Bailey in her first plate appearance drew a walk in the first as well. 0-1 missing downstairs. Well, Riley Wyman, so far today, 30 pitches, 18 of them have been for strikes. She's found that zone early and often today. Like I said, she's done a really good job for Virginia Tech. Not a lot of flyouts for the Hokies either today. Only a few grounders and one or two that have made it to uh, the outfield. Ball will miss upstairs, and Fagan now ahead in the count, two to one. Jamie Bailey stands on deck. She'll get an opportunity, barring a double play, hit into by Fagan here. Just a reminder, Jamie Bailey with two three-run home runs this season. Fouled off back towards the glove of Hasler, evens the count at 2-2. NC State, for what it's worth, has turned two double plays this season. Virginia Tech has hit into five. That's all luck right there, really. <laughs> yeah, hitting it to the right spot. Well, the good news for the Hokies, Emma Ritter, who's at first, has some speed. 2-2 pitch from Wyman. Fouled off, just getting a piece of it, using the full length of the bat was Fagan to foul it off. Staying alive in the at-bat. Again, 3-0, NC State our score. After in the top half of the inning, Rebecca Murray hit a three-run home run. She's been the MVP of the series so far for the Wolfpack. Two arms getting loose in the arm farm for the Hokies, by the way. 2-2, two -two. hit over to second, bobbled by Sykes, the flip on the first, and nobody's out. And I believe this is going to go down as an E4 that allows everybody to reach. We'll see what the official scoring decision is. But again, I believe that's going to go in as an error. Advancing to second base is Emma Ritter. Everyone's safe. And that was, I'm, I, you know, Sykes didn't get the out. But that was an exquisite play. Dropped her knees, took it off her chest. That hurts, first off. And then second, to stop it from trickling in. Could have had Ritter going all the way to third. And it is popped up on the scoreboard. That's a single for Cameron Fagan. That'll help right. the batting average. <laughs> Jamie Bailey takes the first pitch too far inside around belt high for ball number one. She bats with two runners aboard, Fagan at first and Ritter at second. And this primes my Jamie Bailey stat. Pitch to Bailey. Strike right at the letters, counts even to 1-1. 
Jamie Bailey this season against right-handed pitchers, batting 389. That's a few ticks down of her total batting average of 396. Right-handed batter in Bailey <laughs> taking on the right-handed pitcher in Wyman. 1-1, one, one. ball too low. 2-1, standing on deck is Bree Peck. Bailey this season, six hits, three doubles, excuse me, three home runs this season, 13 RBIs, called strike inside, counts even at twos. This season, 19 hits for Bailey, a double, a triple, and three long balls. Went two for four yesterday against the pack. 2-2 pitch, one of the biggest pitches of the inning coming from Wyman. Upstairs, <laughs> dangerous take for yeah. Bailey. Count's gonna go full. There's some fans over the left field wall, by the way. A lot of fans over the left field wall taking in the game before walking over to Castle, I'm assuming. They want a souvenir walking in the Castle. Payoff pitch. Hit towards center field, should be playable for Murray, and it is. No runners advance, so there's now two outs after Bailey flies out to center. Runners at first and second, and it brings up Bree Peck. And not a lot of players you'd rather have at the plate than Bree Peck. 13 hits this season. Of that, seven of those have been for extra bases. Two doubles, a triple yesterday, and four home runs. Six RBIs on the season. Went one for two yesterday, including drawing a walk. If any hit into the outfield is going to get Emma Rutter home right now. They will be running no matter what. First pitch, frame and placed perfectly for Wyman. Mm. That drew some groans here in the crowd. <laughs> uh, to me, that was a near perfect pitch from Wyman. It's gonna be an 0-1 regardless. <laughs> You're gonna get blasted by some fans here soon. <laughs> I'm calling it as I see it, inside. Now that one's definitely, oh, 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 excuse me. I got you there. <laughs> I am forced to eat my words of called strike. <laughs> that one looked inside to me, and maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about up here. <laughs> It's an 0-2 now to Peck, number 88. Two runners aboard, fouled off. Oh. Now I know the answer to that one. That's a foul <laughs> ball. I cannot hey. get that one wrong. That's the second ball to hit the glass in the indoor facility today. Shall we keep a running counter? Counter up to two today. Two today, I forget how many there was. One yesterday, yesterday. so three, one yesterday, three on, right. the, on, the, uh, on the series. We'll let the letter other broadcast associates <laughs> at Learfield know about the count so they can keep it up as well. Oh. There's a high pop up in the infield. Good win, the third baseman calling everybody off and makes the catch. A foul out to third and the Wolfpack escapes some danger. The Hokies leave two stranded for the second time today. We're through three complete. Wolfpack lead three to nothing. You're listening to Virginia Tech softball here on the Virginia Tech Sports Network from Learfield. We welcome you back here to Tech Softball Park. Tyler Katz joined alongside Nick Brown on the call here on the Virginia Tech Sports Network from Learfield. It's three to nothing. Wolfpack leading as we head into the top of the fourth. Lindsey Grind still in the circle for the Hokies. Coming up on the docket for Virginia Tech softball, the series finale between NC State and Virginia Tech tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Yep. Nick and I will have the call once more. Pre-game coverage beginning at 12.45. And then on Tuesday, a doubleheader against Mount St. Mary's. Our other broadcast associates, Kyle Marshak and Carter Hill, will cover that two-game set on Tuesday for you against Mount St. Mary's. So if you like Tyler and I, Sorry we won't be there. If you don't like us, then good for you. There's two more broadcasters. Yeah, all you have to do is wait till Tuesday. <laughs> First pitch taken upstairs for Hasler for ball number one. Lindsey grinds so far today. 59 pitches, 36 of them have been for strike. So finding the zone, I don't think quite as well as she would have hoped. 1-0. That one's down Main Street for a called strike. Even for Hasler, 1-1. Hasler, who swung at almost every pitch yesterday, has only swung at once, and it was a ground out <laughs> to third base, but uh, today very disciplined. 1-1, taken high just above the lettering. By the way, for those curious, 
Rachel Castine did re-enter the game for the pinch hitter Morgan Overright as she's back behind the plate. Again, that re-entry rule in softball, unique to the sport. 2-1, hammer towards left, back goes Ritter, and just in front of the warning track will make the catch. And I'll tell you what, Nick, NC State has been putting some rides into softballs today. Yeah, they have. That's the fourth or fifth that have gotten on close to the warning track or over the warning track. And uh, yeah, right now, NC State getting bats on balls today. Something that they did not do at all yesterday. Only two hits, both belong to the same girl in Rebecca Murray, who hit the three-run home run today that allows NC State to have the three to nothing lead. First pitch to Taylor Ensley misses her ball one. Update from around Hokie Sports World. Top of the third inning in baseball, the Hokies lead the Charlotte 49ers two to nothing. Again, top three from English Field. 1-0, too far upstairs. Women's in the world of women's basketball, 90 seconds away from tip off between Duke and Virginia Tech. And I could tell you one thing, there's a lot of NC State fans here right now at Tech Softball Park, but everybody in Tech Softball Park right now is rooting for the Hokies in that game. <laughs> and playing Duke. 2-0, ball outside. I can't believe I now get to somewhat say this, but our, I guess, Learfield co-worker, Evan yeah. Hughes, on the call. That's a, a roundabout somewhat way. <laughs> Go ahead and switch on over to Hot 100 or 100.7 if you're in the New River Valley. 3-0. Down main for a called strike. It'll keep Ensley there. Still a hitter's count for the Wolfpack wearing the white top and red bottom. 3-1. Woo, chilly. It is a still frigid day, not as cold as yesterday. Oh, heck, no, I'm not complaining. No. <laughs> swing and a miss, a big hack for Ensley. She wasn't gonna swing on the 3-0. Seeing the called strike, she got the green light on the 3-1 and now has worked it full. Ensley batting 268, 0 for 1 today after a fly out to center back in the second. Payoff, foul tip into the glove. That's strike three. That's the third punch out of the afternoon for Lindsey Grind. Two up, two down. This would be a great confidence booster for Grind if she can go three up, three down and get the Hokies offense back at the plate. Three to nothing, Wolfpack. We're here in the top of the fourth. All three runs came in the top of the third. First pitch to Madison Insko will miss outside for ball one. Madison Insko, yesterday's starting pitcher, then moved to first base and then was relieved for by Libby Whitaker later in that game. She is the starting first baseman today. Oh, one O oh, catches the zone low and outside, catching the strike zone, so the count is even at 1-1. Insko popped out to Cameron Fagan over at second base to end the second inning for the pack. 1-1 delivery from number 1-8, Lindsey Grind. That one catches his own belt high and outside. Really good crowd here from Tech Softball Park. And almost makes you consider putting in those, what are <laughs> temporary seats for the regional. Swing and a miss. That's gonna be strike three. We'll leave it there. Back-to-back -back punch outs for Lindsey Grind. Insko goes down swinging. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth inning here from Tech Softball Park. You're listening to Tech Softball from Learfield. We welcome you back here to Tech Softball Park. Emma Jackson already in the box and takes the first pitch from Riley Wyman for a called strike. This season, Virginia Tech Softball on Learfield brought to you in part by PMSI, the official pest control partner of the Virginia Tech Hokies. It's an 0-1 for Emma Jackson. Low and inside, count goes even. The pregame clock that we have here for Virginia Tech and Duke women's basketball has expired. We're just waiting on the actual game to begin right now. 1-1 one, one count here from TSP, bottom four. Jackson, a big swing, was looking for the fences and was looking to send some fans walking to <laughs> Castle to Castle with a souvenir. But she swings at nothing but air. It's a 1-2. Jackson 0 for 1 today after flying out to center back in the first. Pitch is grounded, foul up the left field line. Counts 1 2. 
By the way, the starters for Virginia Tech women's basketball, Georgia Amor, Taylor Soul, Kayla King, Kayana Trailer, and Elizabeth Kitley. So the familiar starting five starting in the ACC women's basketball semifinal. Riley Wyman in the circle for NC State is really impressed today. Has not allowed a run to the number 10 Virginia Tech Hokies. The one, two will go low and inside. Counts evens at twos. Again, Wyman entering today 0-6 on the season with an ERA of well, 7.78 entering today. She's that lowered is, it a little bit today. That has <laughs> since sunk. 2-2. Hit over towards third, off the glove of Goodwin and rolls into left field. That should be given a base hit for Emma Jackson. We'll wait on the official scoring decision on that. And it is given a base hit pretty quickly by the official score. Emma Jackson singles to start off the bottom of the fourth. No outs, And we'll get aboard. a pinch runner here, Kelsey Brown. Number 21 will get the pinch runner spot for the designated player, Emma Jackson. And she scored yesterday in that position, Kelsey Brown. The kid public address announcer hopping in for the inning to announce the Hokie batters, announces Addie Green, the right fielder. Always a great tradition in the sport. Ball goes upstairs for ball number one. Well, Nick, I know both of us have some experience in that PA booth. Yeah. Here at Virginia Tech. Fun work. Always nice to come out to the ballpark, provide some energy to the fans through the PA mic. It's an 0-1 for Addie Green here. Ball upstairs <laughs> and a look back. Taking off from first base was Kelsey Brown, but Amanda Hasler stared her back down to first. She scampered right back to that pillow. She, she wasn't taking off. She gets Three so point low. stance for <laughs> Kelsey Brown. She gets so low. At first, she nearly took, takes off ball number one. Ball two make that downstairs. And Brown's just one of those players where it's so hard for a catcher to get a read because she takes off the same way whether she's faking it or whether she's actually stealing. So you don't know whether it's to throw down or not until it's too late and Brown's stolen the bag. 2-1, this one's lifted towards right field and deep, this one's off the scoreboard. Addie Green sends one out and cuts into the deficit. And for Addie Green, make that home run number Cinco on the year. Now she is in sole possession of the home run leader. She was tied with Kelsey Bennett, who's actually up the bat right now with four. She's now got five, and so Kelsey Bennett can tie the game with what also be the tying in the team leading home run department. Huge one lifted right off the scoreboard. First home run from Tech Softball Park for the Hokies this season. And that kid PA announcer has provided some life into these Hokies. Here's Kelsey Bennett, first pitch taken upstairs for ball number one. Like Nick mentioned, four home runs for the Hokie third baseman. And now is on a deficit to Addie Green in the team home run lead. It's the 28th home run for the Hokies this season. Ball comes inside and low. By the way, that game in Greensboro has tipped off about a minute and 15 seconds in. The Hokies lead the Blue Devils two to nothing. 2-0 to Kelsey Bennett. The pitch from Wyman popped up behind home plate. Will that stay in? Hasler has a read and makes the catch in foul territory. Nice heads up play by Hasler to make the catch. It brings up the true freshman shortstop, Tegan Thrunk. Tegan Thrunk flew out to center field back in the second. And Thrunk, one of the best freshmen so far for Virginia Tech as she'll foul one off out of play to start off the at-bat. 
Well, Virginia Tech came into today's game leading the NCAA in team home runs. They had 27 home runs entering today, make it 28. The next closest team, the Clemson Tigers with 26 home runs. Pitch to Thrunk comes inside, check swing, called a strike. Oh, it's an 0-2. The appeal did not matter as it was a called strike by Donald Purnell, the second, our home plate umpire. Bottom of the fourth inning, three to two, Wolfpack lead. All five combined runs have come from home runs. Pitch from Wyman, swing and a miss by Thrunk for out number two. It's the second strikeout for Wyman today. And it will bring up the nine hole. We're gonna get another pinch hitter here to hit for Castine. The catchers this season for Virginia Tech, Rachel Castine and Kylie Aldrich have not done incredible at the plate so far this season. And it will be Madison, Madison Hansen. Hansen. Hansen played a big role in the Clearwater trip as a designated player, including a couple of big home runs against Oklahoma State and Nebraska. She gets her Tech softball park debut this season. And now time called as we're gonna get a meeting in the circle. Yeah, Madison Hansen, former, formerly known as Madison Roundtree, happily married to Jesse Hansen, offensive lineman uh, for Virginia Tech. These are two very, uh, uh, very athletic <laughs> people right there. Yeah, well, always great to see a hokey love story, Nick. <laughs> and they have, they, have a, they have an NIL deal where they actually have a commercial together. Uh, and it's uh, quite entertaining if you want to go ahead and check that out. So the second pinch hitter to pinch hit for Rachel Castine, and it will be Madison Hansen. Played only eight games last season. We'll talk about this, another athletic family with the marriage between Madison Hansen <laughs> and Jesse Hansen. Her dad, Glenn Roundtree, played football at Clemson and was the first player in Clemson school history to play more than 3,000 snaps in a season. First pitch is in for a strike for Madison Hansen. It's an 0-1. Sure, he was happy that she married a, an offensive lineman. <laughs> ball comes high and inside for a ball. Hansen, classmates with us, I'm sure in a couple classes, sports media and analytics major with aspirations to work in the NFL office in New York City. 1-1. High for ball two. Bases are empty after the two run home run by Addy Green earlier in the inning. Hokies still trail in this ball game, three to two. Update from Greensboro, it's a six to four narrow lead for the Hokies women's basketball team. Six minutes and 10 seconds remain in the opening quarter. Fly ball lifted towards center field, Ooh. running catch, an athletic catch by Rebecca Murray in center. Flashes the leather for the out. We're through four complete. The Wolfpack lead three to two. We'll be back for the fifth inning here on the Virginia Tech Sports Network from Learfield. We welcome you back here to Tech Softball Park, TSP. As we enter the fifth inning, there is a pitching change for Virginia Tech in the circle. Not too many times this season at all have the Hokies used more than one pitcher. They will do so today. And who else but the ace who shut out the Wolfpack yesterday, Emma Lemley taking over. Lindsey Grind's day is done after four innings of work in which she allowed just two hits and three runs, all of those coming in the third inning. So Lemley takes over on the mound. Got the winning decision yesterday with seven innings pitched, only allowed two hits, no runs, walking one and striking out 10. Ellie Gones, or Goins, excuse me, went 0 for two with two strikeouts against Emma Lemley yesterday. Lemley will also face a new opponent in the batter's box, Nadia Sykes, who did not face Lemley yesterday. Top of the fifth inning, three to two, Wolfpack leading. First pitch, swing and a miss for strike number one. And that rise ball immediately comes into play for Lemley. Ellie Gones from Mooresville, North Carolina, attended the same high school 
as Dale Earnhardt Jr. Big race tomorrow for NASCAR. Las Vegas. Oh, one upstairs. Mentioned the Mooresville Blue Devils, and we'll segue that yet again into the women's basketball game down in Greensboro. Six minutes in, the Hokies and Blue Devils tied at six. Biggest story right there, Virginia Tech five turnovers to Duke zero, but still tied at six. 1-1, one, one, big swing and a miss from Goins for strike number two. Four points for Kayla King as she hit a three and a free throw. The lead all scores with four right now. Again, still early at six <laughs> to six, 12 combined points, but when it's the ACC semifinal, That's coverage is wall to wall. Very, very low scoring game. Duke's defense and the Tech defense has been a really good recently. One, two, swing and a miss. Lemley gets Goins chasing. First strikeout of the day for Emma Lemley. Fifth strikeout for the Hokies overall. And including Lindsey Grind's end of the fourth inning, the Hokies have now struck out three straight members of the Wolfpack. Grind had a nice uh, four strikeout evening. And Emma coming in here to shut things down here for the final three frames. First pitch catching the zone, strike one for Nadia Sykes. Went one for one with a single back in the third, came around to score on the three-run home run by Rebecca Murray, who stands on deck. 0-1 delivery. Upstairs, but called a strike right at the letters, reading NC State in red on top of the white jerseys. And no update, by the way, from baseball. Bottom of the third, it's still two to nothing. Hokies over the Charlotte 49ers. 0-2 to Sykes, swing and a miss. Lemley puts down two in a row, swinging. Had 10 strikeouts yesterday. And now two to start the day today. Emma is much different than Grine. Emma yesterday finished out four innings with strikeouts, so she killed four innings with four Ks. She can do it here. Well, the NCAA website has not been updated since yesterday, but acting as if everything is current, Lemley with now 87 strikeouts on the season would be second place in the NCAA Division I behind only Megan Ferraimo of UCLA. She is the best pitcher in the country. Megan is incredible for the Bruins. It's a 1-0 for Rebecca Murray who hit the three-run bomb back in the third. Ball will miss outside and it's a 2-0 count. Perhaps, Nick, maybe, what do you think, Lemley pitching around Murray or going right at her? Mm, might as well go at her. <laughs> Murray did go two for three in the three rounds that Lemley and Murray faced off yesterday. Here comes the 2-0 from Lemley and it's dribbled over to short. Thrunk picks it up onto Bailey in time for the out, three up, three down, including two punch outs from Emma Lemley in relief. We'll head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. And for the Hokies, down a run trying to come back. Due up, top of the order, Ritter, Fagan, and Bailey. We'll be back. You're listening to Virginia Tech softball from Learfield. Couple of substitutions to announce for NC State. A new pitcher, Aisha Wexelman, is now in the circle in relief of Riley Wyman. Her day is done after four innings of work. And uh, Wexel the Hokies faced Wexelman yesterday. In the final three innings of work. The Winthrop transfer. Ball, excuse me, strike comes inside for Emma Ritter, who leads the inning off. Another defensive substitution, Madison Insko no longer at first base. It's now Haley Heislip, who was the flex position yesterday. Oh, one, hit towards left field. Back goes Pavlik. This game is tied. Emma Ritter goes yard for the fourth time this season. And the long ball has brought the Hokies back. We're tied at three. That ball was rocketed and launched. Cleared for takeoff to Beamer way. That was a no doubter. And one of the men's basketball fans making their way to Castle Coliseum will be walking in with a Virginia Tech softball. Well, welcome to the ball game, Aisha Wexelman. 
first batter that she faces. Second pitch of her appearance is sent over the left field fence into the brisk Blacksburg sky over the wall. We're tied at three here from Tech Softball Park. Cameron Fig in the next batter. Shows bunt, tried to lay down a slap, but it goes off the glove and a ball she pulled back in time. All a big home run from Ritter to tie this. All six combined runs have come off the home run. No small ball today from Blacksburg. 1-0 lifted towards right, towards the glove of Goen. She reaches up, nearly got over her head, but it's into the glove for the first out of the inning. Fly out to right for Fagan. Fagan's perfect day is over. <laughs> Fagan was two for two, make it two for three after the flyout. And it will bring up the 0 for one, Jamie Bailey. Walked in the first, flew out to center in the third, and will have her first appearance today against Aisha Wexelman. Wexelman in yesterday's game, three innings of relief. Allowed three hits, two runs, only one earned. Swing and a miss by Bailey for strike one. Did not walk any batters while striking out one pokey. Crowd getting energized off that Ritter home run as the Hokies have clawed back after falling behind 3-0. High and tight for Bailey. Miss for ball one. One ball, one strike. Bottom of the fifth. We are tied at three now. A three-run home run for NC State in the third by Rebecca Murray was then countered in the fourth by a two-run Addie Green home run and then that solo shot by Emma Ritter to tie the Hokies with the Wolfpack. Ball inside to Jamie Bailey. Two balls and a strike. The count of the first baseman. Another trip down to Greensboro. One minute remaining in the first quarter. Hokies lead the Blue Devils 11 to nine. High pop up, this might stay in play. Goodwin calling everyone off. It's in the glove for the second out of the inning. Foul out over to third base for Jamie Bailey as she's retired. Next to grab a bat is Bree Peck. Had a really good game yesterday with what at the time we called an inside the park home <laughs> run, but was a triple advancing home on the air, all on one play. So counted in my in my own statistics. Bree Peck today, however, 0 for 2. First pitch is a called strike. Struck out swinging in the first, then fouled out to third in the third inning. It's her first time today facing Wexelman as she's in her first inning of work. Ball upstairs, counts even at one. Nick, you mentioned Wexelman, the transfer from Elon, excuse me, from Winthrop, excuse me. She took at bats with the Eagles as well, has not taken an at bat as member of the Wolfpack yet. Ball downstairs, counts two and one. Aisha Wexelman this season, eight appearances, two starts, a one and two record and an 884 ERA in 19 innings pitched. Has walked 12 batters, striking out 20 entering today. 2-1, missing low for Peck yet again. Hitters count for the center fielder, 3-1. All right, Bree, your pitch right here, Bree. Drive Hokies have rallied back to tie, have not held a lead in today's game. Bottom five, we're tied at three. Inside, <laughs> called a strike. Count's going to go full to Peck. And you mentioned how it was Bennett and Green tied with four home runs apiece. Bree Peck also holding four home runs herself. So she can tie the team lead with Addie Green with a home run here. She'll foul it back into the screen. That wind picking up on a big gust here. Should die down prior to the next pitch. Wind is blowing towards the outfield. Currently, flag is blowing towards dead center. Payoff pitch, check swing, called strike three regardless. The Hokies tie the game on a solo shot by Emma Ritter to lead off the inning. We're through five complete here in Blacksburg. Wolfpack and Hokies tied at three. We'll be back for the sixth inning. We welcome you back here to Tech Softball Park. We're tied at three and heading into the sixth and seventh inning. The man taking you the rest of the way on play-by-play. -play. Here's Mr. Nick Brown. 
Thank you, Tyler Katz. Welcome back to Tech Softball Park. Again, the wind is starting to increase a little bit more, and that has helped the long ball today. Five, three to three is our score, and all six runs have been scored on three different home runs. NC State opened the gates and scoring in the top of the third with a three-run home run. And then in the bottom of the fourth, Virginia Tech got on the scoreboard finally with an Addie Green two RBI home run. And to lead off the bottom of the fifth, Emma Ritter, a solo shot, no out home run, got things rolling. Virginia Tech went three up, three down right after that solo shot, and that is how we sit through five complete frames. Emma Lemley's first offering here in the top of the sixth is a called strike, and it's an 0-1 count. Five hits for Virginia Tech, two for NC State. Besides the home run, NC State's only mustered a single. The 0-1 is upstairs on the rise ball, but didn't find the zone. It's a 1-1. Lindsey Grine was the starting pitcher for Virginia Tech today. She did three innings of work. She was done after three complete frames. Zero walks, four strikeouts. She allowed two hits. She did have a one hit by pitch, and that's a big swing and a miss on the 1-1 count. It ups the count to 1-2, to two, and Lemley's one away from striking out her four, or third strikeout of the game. Well, Emily had a really good start striking at the first two batters she saw back in the fifth inning. Lemley deals the one-two. A rise ball that didn't find the zone again, and it's two-two. Caitlin Pavlik today. 0 for two. One for two, excuse me. 0 for one. That's a ball, and that's dribbling out into left field, and Pavlik will reach on a base hit. Only the third hit of the day for the Wolfpack. The previous two came back in the third. It was a single that then set up the home run. So that'll be the first hit allowed by Lemley today. That one scampered out to right uh, to left field up and over the glove of Kelsey Bennett. No outs, runner aboard for the Wolfpack. Goodwin up the bat. Clemson transfer grounds one to Bennett. Oh, one's out at second. The second one's out at first. Great six for three ball movement from the Hokies. They turn their fifth double play as a defense this season, Nick. Beautiful play by Bennett to second to first, and it's two out with nobody on after the double play. That is a perfect bounce right there. Bennett with the IQ to go to second. Fagan was there to touch up, and Bailey reaching out with every inch she had in her to get the second out. The first offering to Marbury is foul tipped into the netting, 0-1 count. Three to three is our score here on the top of the sixth. Virginia Tech leading the hit column five to three. They led five to two entering this, but a leadoff single turned into a double play. The next at bat. The 0-1 is in the dirt for a 1-1. Well, what a difference from yesterday. First of all, the weather's a lot nicer today, but the score has also changed. It was a seven nothing win yesterday for the Hokies, now tied 3-3. Lemley fires the 1-1, one, one, trying to graze the outside corner. She can't, and it's a 2-1. Marbury today 0 for 2, batting 217 on the season. She has three home runs on the year. Firing the 2-1 is Lemley, and the rise ball gets Marbury swinging 2-2 two, two count with two outs. Kayla Marbury, the Maryland native, Bishop McNamara High School. The 2-2 count from Lemley is right over the plate, strike three. Caught her looking and retires the third out. A double play and a strikeout is how we do things here in the top of the six. Virginia Tech and NC State. Still tied through five and a half innings. You're listening to Virginia Tech Softball here from Learfield. 
Welcome back to TSP at Tech Softball Park in Blacksburg, Virginia, located within the hills of the New River Valley. Virginia Tech and NC State game two of the home opening series of the 2023 campaign for Virginia Tech. It's all knotted up at three apiece. Virginia Tech up the bat here on the bottom of the sixth, five to three in the Hitcom Hokies lead at that stat margin. And Virginia Tech leading in Greensboro in women's basketball as well, 21 to 18, about halfway through the second quarter of play. If you wanna go listen to Evan Hughes, you can. Kelsey Brown will get her first at bat of this series. She's been a pinch runner in the last, well, today and yesterday. But this will be her first at bat of the series. And Pita Moore moving her from that pinch runner spot into the DP role in place of Emma Jackson. The stolen base queen for Virginia Tech. Laid, <laughs> tried to lay down a slap, but Halted a little bit, still strike one. Goodwin, the third baseman for NC State, looked ready for it, was charging in and was nearly on top of Brown by the time the ball hit Hasler, the catcher's glove. The 0-1 from Wexelman is going to look to be slapped again, but Brown pulled back to 1-1 count. Haymarket, Virginia native, Battlefield High School, transferred from JMU. Last year, all ACC third team. The Speed Demon has set the VHSL stolen base record at 133. Lays down the slap, speeding her way to first. She gets there. It's a bad throw to first, and she tripped on the bag. So I don't know if it was th that she tripped over the bag or the ball hit her. her. She, she is getting down. up, limping a little bit. She is safe at first, nonetheless. She sped her way all the way over to that first peg, and the she was upright, she would have scampered her way to second as the pitch the first was not completed. Nonetheless, a runner aboard and it's Brown. One of the fastest girls on the team too. You gotta watch if you're NC State for that steal. And that sets up Addie Green. Addie Green. Well, this is familiar. Kelsey Homered. Brown at first and Addie Green at the plate. Homeward and back in the fourth inning. Right off the scoreboard, drilled her own face in the picture on the scoreboard. Well, by the way, I should mention in Greensboro, Virginia Tech going on a big run right now, forces Kara Lawson to call timeout. It's 27 to 18. The 1 0 count, Brown goes to second, and she slides very comfortably and smoothly in the first base. She is now six for six in stolen base attempts. She makes it look so, so easy. 1 1 count for Green with a runner in scoring position, no outs, and it's Kelsey Brown in scoring position. Three to three here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Hokies trying to get out of this. A frame early. Lifting one deep right field. It's green going back into the pine trees. It is gone. Deja vu for the Hokies. Kelsey Brown and Addie Green touching the fourth bag in two out of the last three innings. The Hokies lead five to three as Green goes yard once again. What a game for the Hokies. 30. Team home runs now in the season, leading the NCAA and just continuing to pour on the power here at TSP. Addie Green gets her sixth home run of the season. Her second two, run, two home run game of the year. She had one against Purdue Fort Wayne earlier in the year and she gets her second in the same place in right field. Well, that you know ball. what, Nick? That was very familiar. You know who else came in first before Addie Green touched home? Kelsey Brown. Deja vu from the fourth inning, and we're gonna have a pitching change now as Wexelman, after giving up two home runs and three earned runs to the Hokies, she will exit out for a be done for her day. Warming up for the Wolf Pack today is number seven, Wynn Gore, the Charlotte, North Carolina freshman coming on and she was a first team All-American according to extra inning softball. And she will get the call for the pack. Yeah, Wynn Gore 
a freshman out of Charlotte. Her last appearance came a little, or just about a week ago on February 24th against the Penn Quakers. Started her only career game so far, got a no decision, but to the Quakers who have been more or less in the, the lower portion of the Ivy League standings, allowed nine hits and two runs to the Quakers in three and two thirds. Well, she's just trying to get out of this inning. Zero outs for Virginia Tech and Kelsey Bennett is up to bat for Virginia Tech. Win Gore, Charlotte Christian School is where she had her primary and middle and high school school. That's the same school as these, uh, these familiar names, Seth and Steph Curry, I think. And I believe those are the sons of uh, Virginia Tech legend, Del Curry. Oh, okay, Thank, thanks for saying that. I, I now know who you're talking about. Kelsey Bennett up to bat. Gore's first offering. Ooh, I thought that grazed her. And they're gonna say Bennett went for it. I thought that grazed Bennett's side, but eh, what do I know? You know, here, here at Virginia Tech, it almost feels like Steph Curry doesn't exist, and then you say, oh, <laughs> that's Dell's son. And yeah. it's, oh, okay. <laughs> Bennett takes a big swing and a miss. 0-2 count. Yeah, Seth, Seth and Steph Curry aren't it's Steph and Seth Curry in Blacksburg. They are Del Curry's sons. Meanwhile, in the rest of the country, Del Curry is just Steph Curry's dad, <laughs> which rightfully so. The 0-2 is swung on and grounded in the left field for a base hit. Kelsey Bennett banked it off of the third baseman's glove, and Bennett's aboard on the 0-2 count. Well, Nick, uh, it would have to require now the Hokies batting around or the Wolfpack tying the game or taking the lead but it's worth mentioning two home runs by Addie Green. The most home runs the Hokies have ever hit in the game was three by the woman now being taken out for a pinch <laughs> runner at first base in Kelsey Bennett against NC State two seasons ago, the last time these two teams met. Pinch runner for the Hokies. Number five, Jenna Pearson, the redshirt sophomore. And up to bat for Virginia Tech is number seven, Tegan Thrunk, who had a highlight reel put out earlier in the first inning, or the second inning, excuse me, where she laid every inch of her body to snag a ground ball. That ball finds dirt for her first offering and it's a 1-0 count. Thrunk stayed home. Pearson resting at first. No outs for Virginia Tech and they hold a 5-3 lead, battling back from a 3-0 deficit. The 1-0 turns into a 1-1 as Thrunk didn't swing, but that one found the zone. Seven hits for Virginia Tech compared to NC State's three. One error for the Wolfpack, zero for the Hokies. Gore comes home, it's inside, and it's ball number two. Tegan Thrunk on the year. She was three for three against Abilene Christian in the two games she played against the Wildcats. That swung on and grounded to third. Trying to make it to first is Pearson, and she does not. She's put out at second, but Thrunk will reach on the fielder's choice. So one aboard still for Virginia Tech. No real change right there. One out for the maroon and orange. It looks like we'll get another pinch hitter here. There's been a pinch hitter almost every <laughs> at bat for Rachel Casting. And I think this is gonna be a permanent change as Aldridge yeah. is the other catcher for the Hokies doing the pinch hitting. Freshman Kylie Aldridge stepping in, Fayetteville, North Carolina native. She lets that one zoom past her for a strike one. Fayetteville, North Carolina, home of rap legend J. Cole. It's a big part of that area. J. Cole's rise to fame. This one swung on deep right field, heading back to the wall. It is up and over and into the pine trees. Two, two run home runs here in the bottom of the sixth and the Hokies extend their two point, two run lead to now four. Seven to three is the new score as the pinch hit freshman Kylie Aldridge lifts one into the pine trees behind the right field wall. 
Well, what a way to break out of the slump. Kylie Aldridge, one for 21 on the season prior to that at bat. What a way to break out of it with a two run shot here in the bottom of the sixth. She'll take that in a heartbeat as the Hokies get cruising here in the bottom of the sixth. That's a grounder to shortstop and Ritter's out at first. Well, how about four home runs today for the Hokies combined? Up to 31 team home runs. They really want to keep their spot at the top of that NCAA rankings list. They'll take four in a heartbeat. It's a four run, sixth, bottom of the sixth inning. Lead is seven to three. Cameron Fagan stepping into the bat, into the box. Two outs on the Jumbotron. And Fagan lets that one go past her for a strike one. Nick, one thing to mention right now. The Hokies in Greensboro are on a 17-0 run, 36-18 over the Blue Devils. <laughs> and you just got a couple cheers for that. <laughs> Fagan lets that go past her for a 1-1. Yeah, almost. <laughs> that news is spreading in yeah, TSP. news <laughs> is going to start to spread over towards the bullpens and down the line. And that NC State section would celebrate that just as much as the Hokie fans as well. A 17-0 run. One to one, Fagan lifts this one foul and into the stands. Look out, fans, and there is a slice of free pizza. Once again, that promo, if you turn in a foul ball this season at any point, you get a free slice of pizza. So go ahead and do it, because we certainly like pizza. pizza yeah. yeah, it's free pizza. Fagan today, two for three on the evening. Two singles today. And she takes a big swing and miss to close out the bottom of the sixth. That was a successful bottom of the sixth for the Hokies. Two two home run, two run home runs in the right field. The first was Addie Green, and the second was the pinch hit home run by Kylie Aldridge. That extends Virginia Tech's lead to four, seven to three, with no runners left on base for the Maroon and Orange. We'll see you for the uh, top half of the seventh. On the other side of this break, you're listening to Virginia Tech softball here from Learfield. Welcome back to Tech Softball Park here in Blacksburg, Virginia. The Hokies leading the Wolfpack of NC State seven to three after two two run home runs were lifted out of the park here just a half inning ago. Virginia Tech eight hits compared to NC State's three. The Wolfpack got on the board in the top of the third with a three run home run and the Hokies fell into that deficit quickly. And then in the bottom of the fourth inning, Virginia Tech scored on a two run home run courtesy of Addie Green and then a solo shot home run by Emma Ritter in the bottom of the fifth, tied the game up. And then Addie Green, deja vu in the bottom of the sixth, another two run home run. That was followed up by another two run home run by Kylie Aldridge. So here in the top of the seventh, we'll get things rolling with Hasler. She takes a big swing and miss to start things off. Hasler today, who's gone 0 for 2 and 0 for 5 in the series. 0 for 4 in the series, excuse me. Struck out twice yesterday. She's flied out twice today. An 0-2 count quickly for Emma Lemley, who has been dealing since the third inning. The 0-2 from Lemley, swing and miss for Hasler, who was so disciplined earlier today. Not that time, three big hacks and an 0-3 count. Tis another K for Miss Emma Lemley, her third strikeout of the day. Seven to three is your score. Lemley's first offering to Ensley comes right now. Right down Broadway for strike one. Well, how about the Hokie pitching staff? Eight combined Ks, four for Lemley, four for Grine, who is the starter. Lemley lets her right hang dangle. She's two outs away from closing out another game. She would get the win in this game as well. Lemley's second pitch of the at-bat is swung on and missed. 0-2 count, five straight strikes for Emma Lemley here in the top of the seventh, trying to close the second game out and earn the series victory over the Wolfpack. 
Virginia Tech would move on to 2-0 in ACC play as well with this win and 13-4 and on the year if they can close it out. The 0-2 swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back Ks here in the top of the seventh and the Tech fans have risen to their feet here in the top of the seventh, one out away from closing it out once again. NC State, after taking that three to nothing lead in the top of the third, saw that melt away to a seven to three lead for the Hokies. And now down to their final out. Lemley wheels and deals the first offering. It's grounded into left field. Bennett couldn't reach it. And Insko will reach on a base hit. Keeping it alive for now. A grand slam would tie the game. There is two outs. Virginia well, NC State would also need to get their next two batters aboard just to have that opportunity as well. The Hokies have force put outs at second and first right now. Ince goes on board at first base. Up to bat is Lucero for her first at bat of the evening and series. She swings and misses the first offering by Lemley. Lucero's brother last year was a quarterback, starting quarterback for six games for the Blazers of UAB. The 0-1 is fouled down the right baseline and it's an 0-2 count. Lemley can close it out with one more strike. 0 for 3 is Lucero on the season so far. Last appeared against East Tennessee State as a pinch runner. Lemley stares down Lucero, an 0-2 count. Two outs, final strike. Offered by Lemley, and it's foul tipped into the netting. Lucero stays alive. Insko on the first base. Trying to keep her team alive, Lucero at the bat. 0-2 count. Two outs for the Hokies in the top of the seventh with a 7-3 lead. Lemley wheels and deals. It's swung on and pop fly into the stands. And that is a free slice of pizza here in the top of the seventh. They can take that to go. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully they do to go orders here at TSP. <laughs> Brooklyn Lucero can extend this game with a base hit. She's in an 0-2 hole. Two outs, Insko at the first base. Hokies 7-3 lead. Lemley deals, and it's upstairs and away. One, two count. By the way, quickly before our game ends here, quick update from baseball at English Field. Top of the fifth, Hokies lead the Charlotte 49ers four to one. One, two count for Lemley, staring down Lucero. She guns it in, it's swung on, and Lemley snags it! the circle and that will do it at TSP. What a catch by Lemley as she is mobbed by the charcoal gray uniforms and the Hokies will move on to 13 and four on the season and two and oh and ACC play. Pitchers are athletes too. You see that around Twitter a lot and Lemley closes that game out with a marvelous play in the circle. We'll step aside, collect our thoughts and stats, and we come back. We'll have the post-game report here in Tech Softball Park. Virginia Tech victorious 7-3. You're listening to Virginia Tech Softball here from Learfield. 